since you ask me for a further installment of my adventures around the world with a horse that thinks it's a cat, I should be delighted to fill you in. However, since you have also asked me, for God's sake, just to tell it slowly in simple words like a normal person, well, I mean, where's the fun in that? I fear I cannot oblige you. I could do it. What's it? Who are you? I am a man who can tell the tale of an old man and his horse in plain words. <laughs> all right, then you do it. I'll be me. That is all any man can be. That's where you're mistaken. I can also be French and non-specific northern. <laughs> He was an old man, and he had a horse. <laughs> the horse did not think it was a horse. It thought it was a cat, but the horse was wrong. As horses often are about such things. It was no cat, this horse. It was a horse. Yes, I mean, maybe pick up the pace a little bit. <laughs> The man thought he was a man, and he was a man, though not so much of a man as he thought he was. Hey! The man and the horse had walked across America together, and now they had reached the end of America, and there was nowhere left to walk. So, Mr. Fluffy Whiskers, now we must cross the sea. We must swim, or we must sail. Perhaps it is better that we sail. <clears throat> the old man had swum with the horse once before, in series five. <laughs> It'd be a right old palava. <laughs> Very well, then we shall sail. I shall be the captain, Mr. Foofy Whiskers, and you can be ship's cook. Mm -hmm. Yes, all right, and ship's cat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so the old man and the horse went into the village. The horse went one way to buy tinned corned beef and tinned salmon and tinned oats for the horse, and one tin of cat food for the horse's birthday, and also to persuade the village blacksmith to make him a tin opener big enough that it could be used with hooves. <laughs> and the old man went another way to buy a boat. Good day, boat builder, said the old man. I must have a boat today so that I and my horse may sail across the ocean. Have you such a boat? The boat builder was a tall fellow with eyes as blue as the sea and hair as black as the sea at night. <laughs> I have one boat, said the man with one boat. She is no much, but she is sound and she will do for you and your lady friends. No, boat builder, my, my horse. With your boat. <laughs> Carry a horse. The boat builder frowned, and the deep lines appeared in his face like deep lines in the sea, if the sea could be furrowed like the land. Oh, wait. The deep lines appeared like deep lines in the land. I must stop thinking everything is like the sea, thought the storyteller. Not everything is like the sea. Some things are, that is certain like big lakes and <laughs> even very big ponds. But some things are different from the sea. Anyway, said the old man, and the storyteller remembered who the story was supposed to be about. Will your boat carry a horse? No, said the boat seller, frowning with the deep lines forming in his face like nothing to do with the sea. <laughs> of course not. It's a small fishing skiff. Who ever heard of such a boat carrying a horse? Very well, said the old man. Then I am sorry to have troubled you. Wait, will you not buy this boat if it will not take a horse? No. Why then, of course it will take a horse. I don't know why I said it would not before. The old man smiled to himself. It was often this way. At first, the wily merchants would try to trick you. But the old man always got the truth from them in the end. <laughs> the voyage was hard, as such voyages always are across the Pacific Ocean in a small fishing skiff with a horse in it. 
On the ninth day, there was a mighty storm which lashed the sea and carved it into great furrows, like the lines on the face of an irritated boat seller. <laughs> oh, thought the storyteller, I was right before. <laughs> The storm dashed away the sails of the skiff and the tins of food and the mast and the rudder and the thing which swings about and hits you on the head if you're not careful, which, to be honest, the old man was glad to see the back of, but he was not glad to see the back of the other things, for they were necessary for the boat, and without them the boat was hardly a boat at all, but a raft with a brim. <laughs> After the storm came a great calm. Strange, thought the old man. How often it is that after a storm comes a time when it is not stormy at all. <laughs> but then if it were not, not stormy, then it would be stormy. <laughs> and we would say it was still the storm. The old man was a better fisherman than he was a philosopher. <laughs> And he was a terrible fisherman. For three days and nights after the storm, he fished with no result. But on the fourth morning, he felt a tug. <gasps> it is a fish! He told the horse. And, and a big one for the pull is very great. A tuna at least, or a marlin, or, or a shark, or a whale. What's bigger than a whale? Just then they discovered what was bigger than a whale. For it breached the waves beneath them. A submarine! Indeed! <laughs> It was a submarine the old man had caught on the hook of his little fishing rod. Joyfully, the old man and the horse rapped on the roof of the submarine. Good Lord, whatever's that noise? Well, sir, if I was back in Surrey, I'd say it was an old man and a horse trying to attract our attention. <laughs> but this is the middle of the Pacific Ocean, so it can't be. Well, whatever it is, it's damned annoying. Let's dive again and see if that gets rid of it. Right you are, sir. Have we done what we needed to on the surface, then? Well, if I'm honest, I've completely forgotten what we came up here for. <laughs> All right, then. Down we go. And so the submarine sank beneath the waves once more, carrying the helpless old man and the horse with it. <laughs> Said the old man, by which he meant, let's see if we can inch round to one of the portholes and attract their attention. <laughs> Replied the horse, by which he meant, I don't know what you're saying, but let's inch round to one of the portholes and see if we can attract their attention. <laughs> Good Lord, sir. What? There, at the porthole, it looks like an old man and a horse. <laughs> oh, well, that's surprising. Well guessed earlier, though. Thank you, sir. What do you think they want? I expect they'd quite like us to let them in, sir. Well, that's out of the question, I'm afraid. We're under the water now, and you can't open the door once you're underwater because it lets the water in. <laughs> Teach you that on the first day of submarining school. Yes, sir. I remember from my first day of submarining school. But we could always pop back up to the surface and let them in. Oh, no, no, no. We can't go straight up to the surface again. We've only just been. We'll look silly. I'm sorry, sir, but I think we might have to. Look! And the nice sailor pointed to the porthole. The nasty sailor looked and saw that behind the underwater old man, the underwater horse was smiling the smile which horses smile when they have spotted that something mentioned earlier in the story is about to pay off at the end of the story. <laughs> and with gentle menace, <laughs> the horse brandished his giant tin opener. LAUGHTER 